All right, this tutorial covers periodic table trends going left to right across a period and right to left and up and down a column on the periodic table. So <clears throat> as you see in this picture, we could already kind of tell what the trend is going left to right. So it looks like the radius, we could actually, let's define what the radius is actually. So the radius is the distance from, let's say you have lithium with, with three protons, and lithium happens to be on the second row, so it has two, it's going to have two Bohr model rings, or sublevels. Yeah, in this first ring, you have two, actually let me draw these protons like that, and then on the third on the second ring sorry you have a uh, one electron so what the rate what is the radius is actually this distance it's the distance from the nucleus to the furthest electron so it's here to here this is the atomic radius or ar and as we can see as we go left to right the radius is decreasing so why is that why is it decreasing so going left to right, it's a it's an issue of protons. So ask yourself, are you getting more or less protons? Don't worry about any other variable. There are other variables at play, um, which causes actually an anomaly. Um, there's a couple anomalies actually. As like if you look very closely at five versus. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, I'm sorry. If you look closely at 6, it's actually slightly bigger than 5. Um, but don't worry about, for the most part, don't worry about any other variable. Just consider the protons. So what's actually happening? As you go left to right, so we see that we have not increased. This is another key feature, is we have not increased the number of rings when you go left to right. So if you're on the second row, then you have two rings. So... In other words, lithium has just has two rings, fluorine has two rings. So what's going on? As you go left to right, you increase the number of protons. So beryllium has four protons. So beryllium has four. And oxygen has six. So we look at see the oxygen has six. So it's kinda like a and still only two rings. So what this does is these all these six protons, they increase the um, the nuclear charge, which pulls in the electrons even more. Okay, so it kind of like sucks in these electrons closer. So if you add one extra proton, let's say another one here, it would it would pull in. You have another positive positive charge in the middle, so it pulls electrons in even more. Okay, so. Um, less protons, and I have all this summarized on a on a slide coming up. So there's more protons going left to right, and the electrons get pulled in by stronger stronger nuclear attraction. Therefore, the atomic radius gets smaller. All right. So one uh, important thing to note here is if there's more attraction, so the two these two trends, atomic radius and ionization energy, they go hand in hand. Ionization energy is defined as the amount of energy needed to pull away one of these electrons. Okay, to like to physically remove an electron, how much energy is needed. As you can see, if it's held tighter, so if there's stronger attractive force here, okay, if it's held tighter, then it's going to be much more difficult to remove this electron. So you'll see that the two trends are actually uh um explain each other so when the radius gets small there's more nuclear attraction if there's more nuclear attraction it's harder to remove electrons so ie we say it increases the energy required to remove an electron increases okay and it's because of this the nuclear attraction has also increased okay and then for that same reason the radius decreases because their electrons are pulled in closer okay so um so here's the ionization energy trend, what I was just describing. So as you can see, these are actually in uh, kilojoules per mole. And you can see these numbers are actually increasing. 
uh, well, this happens to be an anomaly, which we'll, we'll cover uh, very shortly. Uh, but generally, when you go left to right, the ionization energy is increasing. So it's going up here. Okay, to here, to here. Um, so electrons are held tighter because the center is more positive, so it becomes harder to pull them off. Okay, so um, I have the, those, kind of what I've been saying, uh, summarized on this slide. So going left to right, here's what's happening. Okay, you get more protons, electrons get pulled in by stronger attraction, um, and that explains the atomic radius trend. So um, now for IE, this increases because there's more protons and you get more nuclear charge. Okay, this this makes electrons harder to remove or ionize. Okay, so going left to right, it's the protons. Okay, and you'll see going up and down is you'll be thinking that. Let's see, so. Going up and down, you'll see that the trend, that the radius actually increases. So here's lithium, again, two rings, and this, this red line right there is showing the actual radius. Okay. So the configuration shows that, that it ends with 2s. So you'll see that also the principal energy uh, level or the principal quantum number, as it may be called, also be called, uh, is equal to the number of rings it has. So it's easy to tell when you write the configuration how many rings something's going to ha have, or just look at and see what row it's on. Okay, so let's see going down that same column, you had lithium with two rings, and then you have cesium with six rings. So as you can see, this red line, the radius is much bigger. It's because you got more rings, okay, or sublevels. So there's also the added effect of electron to electron repulsion is also happening. Okay, so what do you think about this electron? Would it be easier to remove or harder to remove this electron here? Okay, there's remember the the middle positive, this electron's negative, and we're going to tie this all in with uh, something called Coulomb's law. Okay, so there's less attractive force here because it's further away, so it should be easier to remove as you go down. So that means ionization energy decreases as you go down the column when the radius increases because of nuclear attraction. So both trends, left and right, up and down, is the amount, you're looking at the amount of nuclear attraction on the furthest electron. And then you could explain any trend going in any direction if you think of that one thing. Okay, so here I have this in writing, so going up and down a column. Okay, I kind of explained IE already. Okay, so the the you'll see the electron is further away, so it's should be easier to pull them off. And we see this with these numbers here. So this is again is in uh, kilojoules per mole. Okay. So I have these summarized here. So the radius moving down a column. So because you go down each row, you add a principal energy number. In other words, you add more rings, which move electrons further away. Okay, we don't really want to call them rings. We should be referring to these as sublevels or subshells. So I hesitate to call them rings, but the, when you when I say the word ring, it gives you a better mental image. So I will I will use ring often. Um, also, uh, an, a factor that I didn't this is this this bullet point right here has a name. And this is called this is called shielding. When the inner core electrons. So if you have like multiple rings, let's say you have a, let's say you have like sodium with 11 protons and it's got three rings, one, two, three, 
Okay, on this third ring, it's got that electron. So these, this has eight, this has two electrons. So by the time you get to this electron, it's going to experience a lot of uh, shielding or electron to electron repulsion, um, which makes the, the electron cloud puffier, which makes the ring or the uh, radius bigger. Okay. And ionization energy, or IE, decreases moving down a column because the electrons are further away, and so they're not held as tight, so they're easier to remove. Okay, and also this extra repulsive effect by the electrons also makes them less attracted, even less attracted to the nucleus, and easier to remove. Okay, so here's a a uh, practice question it says rank the following in terms of increasing AR and IE I will be doing these two the first two and then I'll have you guys try the next two so this is me me and you so you'll need your periodic table okay so you could take that out all right so uh, I'm just gonna draw sketch one here so you have a reference point for what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so H is here, lithium is here, and Na is right under it. So these are all in the same column. Okay, in terms of increasing AR, okay, atomic radius. So we want to go from from small to big, small to big. So like mouse, uh, dog and then gorilla okay so so uh, the smallest one here so the radius gets big going down so the radius gets big going down the column okay and it's helpful to have these arrows on your periodic table and the radius um, decreases going this way Okay, or you could you could uh in order to do this um write it the same way, you could go the radius increases going right to left. You could do it that way. Or actually, you know what? Let's do it this way. The radius decreases going up and to the right. Okay, let's leave it like that. Okay, meanwhile uh IE is the reverse of that, so it increases. Okay, so the radius, uh, the uh, we want to go small to big, so it goes H. Next is Li, and the biggest one is Na. Okay, and then you'll see that the Na will have the um, the least ionization energy because it has the biggest radius. Okay, Li, and then H. Okay, electronegativity is uh, similar to IE. It's the same trend. And I'm, I'm kind of like saving this topic for when we get to bonding, which we've actually already covered, Ian, quite a bit, actually, a few weeks ago. So, um, okay, so for radius for N, O, and F, N, O, F is going across the period here. So from small to big, F is the smallest, then oxygen, then nitrogen. And for ionization energy, it's N, O, and F. And for electronegativity, it's going to be the same. Like that. Okay, so you guys try these two for your periodic table trends.